So have you ever gotten this message from your iPhone whenever you're trying to back up a brand new iPhone or your iPad or if you're trying to back up your photos? Well, in this video, I want to break down Apple's most anxiety inducing service and product, which has to be iCloud. Since the inception of iCloud, it's been one of the more confusing services that Apple's ever created because you never know how much storage is going to run out. You don't know where the storage is being taken up, who's taking up that storage. Now you have different tiers, different family plans. You have Apple One. So in this video, we're going to clear all that up and make it just a little bit easier to digest and be able to manage all these complicated storage functions. So without further ado, let's hop right into iCloud, start off with pricing, and then go through the walkthrough, and finally some tips and tricks on how to really save on that iCloud storage. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's hop right into this and let's talk about pricing first and specifically iCloud Plus. So by default, everybody gets five gigs of iCloud storage. If you have any sort of Apple device, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, or some sort of Mac OS computer, and that by default will allow you to sync most of your applications, like the notes application, voice memos, anything that's kind of Apple related, and then some third party ones, as well as iCloud photos and messages and things like that. So one thing to kind of take note in the first tip I'm going to give you is that if you have the ability to access applications across all of your different Apple devices and whatever you're doing on one hardware device then gets ported over to the other hardware device without anything happening, that means that application is using iCloud storage. Easy example to show off is your messages application as well as maybe your notes application, voice memos. So whenever you write something in the notes app from maybe your iPhone, it's going to appear on your Apple computer as well. So. But then the pricing steers begin to change a little bit. The moment you start to pay for iCloud storage is when you go into this new category called iCloud Plus. So real quick to break down purely the storage, you'll pay 99 cents per month to get 50 gigs of storage, 299 per month to get 200 gigs of storage, two terabytes of storage is gonna be $10 a month. And the new tiers that have been added over the last year or two is a six terabyte version that's $30 a month and then the 12 terabyte version that's $60 a month. And again, once you start paying for it, so once you get to that 99 cent tier, you can actually share this as part of a family plan if you would like to. One thing to note is that iCloud Plus does bring some services that are very beneficial from a privacy and security standpoint. The first thing that you're gonna get above the free tier is going to be the iCloud Private Relay, which is my favorite one because it's essentially a VPN or a random VPN that's put inside of your actual system. And as an example to show you guys iCloud Private Relay, all you have to do is go into your iCloud, go into the Private Relay button, and then you have the ability to then change it up. Now, it's not like those other VPNs like ExpressVPN or Surfshark, where you can decide where you're actually being placed. You have two options here. You have the option to use your country and time zone. So it'll kind of keep me on the East Coast, but you know, I'm based in New York City, but maybe it'll put me in Florida because it is on the East Coast and it's the same time zone or you can have the maintain general location. So if maybe you wanna be, or maybe you want to know that you are in New York City or in New York State, then that's what that other option is gonna be. But that does come included with iCloud, which is nice to see from a security standpoint. You also get the service called Hide My Email. So if you are signing up to a bunch of newsletters and you don't want the abundance of different kind of spam notifications and emails, to come into your main email, it'll create a randomized email URL for you to be able to just register and get access to whatever you need to get access to, but you won't get all those annoying kind of spam emails once you do register. And then you also get a custom email domain, so you're able to create sort of a custom email that uses Apple servers, which is something that I actually haven't gotten into, and maybe let me know if you guys want a video on how to do that, and maybe we can do it together because I rely on Gmail mostly, but it is nice that that does come with your iCloud Plus membership. And then you also have Apple One. Apple One is kind of this bundle that Apple has put together to give you the best of all the different worlds that they created. You have three different tiers. You have your individual, your family, and then your premium tier. And for the individual one, it's gonna cost you $20 a month and you get 50 gigs of iCloud storage, which does include the iCloud Plus. You get Apple TV, Apple Music, and Apple Arcade all built into one. So you can see that you do save some money. If you're an Apple Music user already, maybe you do like Apple Arcade and you like Apple TV, then it's worth it to get it. Then you have the family plan, which is gonna be $26 a month, giving you 200 gigs of storage and then the same TV, music, and Apple Arcade. And then finally, I have the Premiere one, which is going to be two terabytes of iCloud storage. And then you get access to TV, music, arcade, as well as Fitness Plus and News Plus. That's gonna save you the most amount of money if you do use all the services. So if you are really in the Apple ecosystem and you already pay for News Plus and you already pay for Apple Music and Fitness Plus, maybe look into getting one of these tiers. But at the end of the day, it's all about how much iCloud storage you wanna get and you can always add on top of that after the fact. All right, now let's get into actually managing all this storage because this is where a lot of people get confused and a lot of people think it's very daunting. And I will say, after this video, you'll get a better understanding of how to manage all your iCloud storage. 
But if you really want to go in depth with it, definitely set aside maybe 20, 30 minutes of your day to really get this done. I like to do this maybe once every six months or once every year to make sure I'm maximizing my iCloud storage and I'm not overspending essentially. So the way you access it, just go into your general settings and on the top here, you just tap on here, which is your iCloud. It'll give you your name, your email, and then you're gonna to want to scroll down where it says iCloud. So this is the new dashboard. This new dashboard came about only about a year ago. Before this, it was even more confusing. But to give you kind of the layout of what this looks like, you have your storage right here. Like I mentioned, I have Apple One Premiere, which gives me two terabytes of iCloud storage. And then it really breaks it down on exactly what you're spending your storage on. So you can see here that my family usage, so my wife is the only other person in my family, she's using almost 400 gigabytes of those two terabytes. And then everything else pretty much falls on me. So I'm using almost 900 gigabytes of storage of my two terabytes, which again, I could definitely go in here and start to reduce some of that storage. And you can see that the biggest culprits are right here. It lists out what's gonna take up the most amount of storage. For me, it's the iCloud photos, my iCloud backups, as well as my messages. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But if you wanna get a little bit more into it, you can tap into each one of these. It'll let you know what you have in here. So I have over 30,000 photos and I'm now nearing almost 3,000 videos. And then you can go in here and review all your photos and videos one by one. And then you can go in here and it'll suggest what to review. So it'll break it down on per category. So the duplicates, and it'll also tell you how much storage it's taking up. So you can see my duplicates are six megabytes. All of my screenshots add up to 4.6 gigs. And then of course you have all the videos that I've taken, which is over 200 gigabytes of stuff. So if you go into your videos, it'll break it down on which one is the most amount of storage taken up, and then you can delete them one by one if you like to. So that is how you manage all that. And again, it's gonna help you to let you know what is taking up the most amount of storage. Another big culprit right here is going to be your backups. And this one's kind of a hard one because if you do get new phones every year or every other year, unless otherwise stated, it'll keep the old backups of the old phone. So if I go down here, there's two phones on here that I just haven't used in over a year. So Fern's 15 Pro Max, I don't use that anymore, so I don't really need that. So I can go in here and delete this backup and save myself basically 11 gigabytes of space and permanently delete that and then I'll be good to go. And you can see even here that my last backup was on September 30th of 2024. So you get a better understanding of what you're dealing with and maybe if it's something you've actually dealt with in the past or not. And you can see my big one here is going to be my iPad Pro, which is at 206 gigabytes because there's a lot stored on there, but we can go on there and review those backups eventually. But you can also see here that you can review these backups. And again, it's going to suggest which ones to actually get rid of. So this is an old iPad that I had, and this is an older phone. I'm gonna leave those for right now. And then lastly, for me, it's going to be messages. Messages has taken up so much storage because I'm that person that actually keeps their messages forever, which is probably not a good thing. I should probably set it to the one year or the 30 day threshold. But again, you can go in here and delete them one by one if you want to, but most of it is being taken up by videos, memes, and photos that are being shared across all of your devices. And then you can start to look at what individual applications are also using iCloud. So you can see LumaFusion is taking up 35 gigs. You can go down here and see what else is happening. So my health app is taking almost one gigabyte. And you can go in here one by one and turn off all the data or delete all the data from iCloud as well, if you do wanna set that up. And then if you go back out and go back to your dashboard, then you go to this recommended for you. This section right here gives you some recommendations on whether you should upgrade to more storage or whether you should actually delete some stuff. And here you can see that it wants you to upgrade it first, then also delete inactive backups, and then go into your discover. This is a little bit watered down, so I wouldn't recommend upgrading right away because of course you just throw more cash at it and then on a monthly basis pay more and then not have to deal with this. But I do like to think that two terabytes should be plenty for me and my wife and my family. But then we go into the saved iCloud. So here we can actually tap in on all and you get a better outlook on what is using it, how much storage is being taken up, and you can even toggle off and on certain applications if you don't want them to use your iMessage, if you don't want them to use your iCloud storage. So here again, we go back into my photos, 342 gigs, like I have to go back in here and delete a bunch of videos, and you can even turn this off. Now, I do not recommend tapping this because if you do tap it, it's gonna try to turn it off, which I don't want to do. And then if you do this, then it's going to delete every single photo from your iCloud library. So you can actually back it up. You can download all your photos and save it off to a hard drive. You can even go onto the iCloud website and download them off site and physically download everything as a backup. It does take about seven days to actually do that. So do keep that in mind, but that's just something that if you do just want to clear house for some reason, you can just tap that and completely turn it off. Then you have your iCloud drive, which I use a ton. I actually love using my iCloud drive because I actually save things from my iPhone or my iPad onto my desktop and then it shows up on my M4 Mac mini, especially for a smaller documents where I'm not really using a lot of video and photo. But you can see that's taking about 21 gigs or almost 22 gigs. You can even go in here and review larger files. So again, it's just a matter of tapping into each one of these different thresholds and seeing what's recommended and then going in and seeing what you don't need or what you don't like anymore. Of course, you have the iCloud email, which you can see isn't taking up too much space. But the biggest one for me has to be iMessage, right? So like I mentioned earlier, I have my keep messages at forever. I can change it to one year, I can change it to 30 days. But if you do this, if you change it to 30 days, then, then every subsequent message or group chat 
prior to those 30 days will be deleted or all the data will be deleted, not the actual chats themselves. So if you have a lot of photos and videos and memes that you wanna save, then I definitely recommend going in there, saving those and then getting rid of all the iCloud storage that's being taken up by iMessage. Another way to kind of manage this is go into where it says manage storage, go to your top conversations and you can see which conversations are taking up the most amount of storage. So between me and my wife, we have 15 gigs of storage and I have some other ones in here, which I could go in and delete and make my life a little bit easier. But I just wanted to show this off and again, 364,000 messages between all the people that I message in this account, which is absolutely insane. And then you can continue to manage this. So if you scroll down, you start to get a look at what is using iCloud. Like I mentioned, if there's an application where you're starting it on one iPhone or one piece of hardware, and then it magically shows up on some other piece of hardware, that means that it's using iCloud to some extent. So you can go in here and see, you know, Safari uses it, Fitness Plus, my Apple Wallet, Books, Notes should be in here as well. And then there's also third-party applications. So if you download these third-party applications on all of your devices, it'll just sync across all of them. And it'll create those magic moments where everything just kind of is where it's supposed to be, no matter what piece of hardware you're using. And then you can go back here to manage all your iCloud backup. There is a section for this right here. So like I mentioned, you have the ability to backup now. You have the option to toggle this off and on. You can turn off the backing up of this iPhone. And then of course you can manage all the different devices that you have on here. So just to summarize and reiterate what's going to be taking up the most amount of storage for your iCloud, it's going to be your photos library first and foremost, because especially if you have one of the newer iPhones and you have the ability to record in Pro Raw, as well as taking photos in ProRes, then those are gonna take up a significant amount of storage. I believe one minute of ProRes footage or Pro Raw footage is about six gigabytes. So keep that in mind if you have that setting turned on. And same thing with the Pro Raw photos, basically saying that those regular photos go from being anywhere from four to 12 megabytes all the way to 150 megabytes per one single photo because all the data that it's capturing. So definitely keep that in mind. And then another big culprit for me personally was iMessage as well as all the backups that I use. So for each person, it's gonna be a custom situation. Each person is using their iCloud storage differently whether they know it or not. So just go into your dashboard, figure out exactly what's taking up the most amount of storage, see where you can actually delete some or get rid of some or offload it onto a physical hard drive. And then from there, you'll be able to manage your storage and get a better outlook on how much of your iCloud storage is being taken up and where you can save some money as well as some space. Because like I said, the goal of this video is to make sure you're not just spending more and more money on a monthly basis for more iCloud storage, because of course you can just throw more money at it and then it'll solve all the problems that you want, but you don't really wanna to get to the point where you're spending $60 a month for 12 terabytes of storage, because again, that just doesn't make sense for most people. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Hopefully you learned something new. Overall, it is a lot less daunting than you actually think it is. You just have to kind of go in here, manage it little by little, and just give yourself 20 to 30 minutes to really go in here and figure out exactly what's going on with no distractions. And then you'll never get that dreaded notification that you're running out of iCloud storage and you can no longer back up your iPhone. So definitely keep that in mind. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, or if you learned something new, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and leave a little comment down below if this was helpful and what you think about iCloud storage in general, or if it's something that you just want to get rid of totally. But that'll do it, everybody. Until next time, peace.